U.S. invades Syria, kills people, and claims self-defense. Numerous Syrian and foreign militants have reportedly been killed and several U.S. troops injured in an escalating exchange of attacks between the American invaders and the people in the country whose territory they are illegally occupying. On Tuesday night, U.S. Central Command announced that it had conducted precision airstrikes in Deir ez-Zor, Syria, in order to defend and protect U.S. forces from attacks like the ones on August 15th against U.S. personnel by Iran-backed groups. The president gave direction for these strikes pursuant to his Article II authority to protect and defend U.S. personnel by disrupting or deterring attacks by Iran-backed groups, CENTCOM said. Iran has denied any link to the troops targeted in the airstrikes, up to 10 of whom were reportedly killed. The U.S. attack was followed by rocket attacks on U.S. military positions in eastern Ukraine, injuring an unknown number of U.S. troops, to which U.S. troops responded with an Apache helicopter assault on Syrian vehicles from which it claims the rockets were launched. Central Command claims two or three suspected Iran-backed militants were killed in the helicopter attack. As of this writing, it remains to be seen if this exchange of attacks will continue, but what's crystal clear is who the aggressor is. U.S. claims to be in Syria fighting ISIS, but it rarely fights ISIS, journalist Aaron Maté tweeted of the exchange. It's actually there to deny Syria its own oil and wheat, and to occasionally attack Syrians and their allies who defeated U.S.-backed sectarian death squads in the dirty war. What Mate says is completely true. The U.S. is an occupying force who is there without the permission of the Syrian government, without having been attacked by Syria, and without any valid claim to be defending itself from anyone in Syria. The Iran-backed militias in Syria are operating with the full authorization of the Syrian government. The U.S. has quite literally invaded a nation on the other side of the world, killed the people in that nation who don't want them to be there, and then claimed self-defense in doing so. If I broke into my neighbor's house to steal his things, and then murdered him when he tried to stop me or make me leave, it would look pretty ridiculous if I tried to plead self-defense. It would look even more ridiculous if anyone believed me. This comes at the same time as a report from Axios that the British special envoy to Syria had nothing but glowing things to say about the way Israel has been constantly bombing Syria for years. Quote, The British special envoy for Syria told Israeli officials during a visit to Jerusalem several weeks ago that the Israeli airstrike campaign against Iranian military targets is probably the only thing that works in Syria. Israeli foreign ministry officials briefed on the meetings told Axios. In recent years, Israel has launched hundreds of airstrikes in Syria, writes anti-war's Dave DeCamp on the Axios report. The Israelis say that the bombing campaign is to prevent Iran from becoming further entrenched in the country. But the strikes often kill Syrian troops and sometimes kill civilians and damage civilian infrastructure. The U.S. tacitly endorses the bombing campaign in Syria and reportedly coordinates some of the strikes, adds DeCamp. In June, the Wall Street Journal reported that Israel secretly coordinates the bombings with the U.S. and that Washington has approved many Israeli airstrikes that were launched from areas near a U.S. base in southern Syria. So if you're wondering why Western liberals are all waving Syrian flags and loudly condemning the U.S. and its allies for their criminal, murderous assaults on a sovereign nation, that's why. I am, of course, kidding. That is not happening. That sort of mainstream public outcry is reserved solely for the misdeeds of governments the U.S. does not approve of, like the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Westerners are only encouraged to contemplate the horrors of war when it is someone else's war. If it serves the strategic interests of the globe-spanning power structure loosely centralized around the United States, you can bomb your neighbor every week, and it will barely make the news. You can even invade a country on the other side of the world, and then claim you are defending yourself when they try to throw you out.